Welcome to this real Python course, Dependency Management with Python Poetry. My name is Emmanuel, and I'm excited to guide you through this journey of understanding and even mastering dependency management with poetry. If you have faced challenges with managing dependencies in your Python projects, like version conflicts or tricky package installations, you're in the right place. You'll discover how poetry can greatly enhance the dependency management process. After completing this course, you'll learn how to create new Python projects and manage virtual environments using poetry. Configure your project with the pyproject.toml file. Pin your project's dependency versions. Install and manage dependencies using the poetry.log file. Run basic poetry commands using the poetry command line interface. And add poetry to an existing project. In the next lesson, you'll start with understanding what dependency management is, how poetry can help, and then move on to setting up and installing poetry on your machine. Before you go ahead to install poetry in this lesson, let's clarify what dependency management is, the process of managing all the external libraries or packages your Python projects rely on to function properly. As you work with Python, you'll often need these external packages and ensuring you're using the right versions across different machines or deployment or development environments is crucial. This is where poetry comes in. Poetry is a tool that aids you in creating Python projects or managing existing ones while handling dependency management for you. Poetry takes care of everything from project setup to dependency handling, and it can handle all of this with minimal configurations. And in this lesson, I'll guide you through installing poetry on your system so you can start managing your Python dependencies efficiently. What are some of the best practices when setting up poetry? The official documentation strongly advises against installing poetry directly into your project's virtual environment. Since poetry relies on several external packages, doing so could result in dependency conflicts, causing your code or poetry itself to malfunction. Instead, it's best to install poetry separately, allowing it to act as a standalone application. There are a few ways to install poetry on your machine. One is using the tool pipx. Two, following the official poetry installer. There are some other methods like running a manual installation process or using pre-built system packages, but those can be a bit tricky if not done properly. I will highly recommend using pipex for the installation of poetry. Pipex is a great tool that creates isolated environments for Python command line applications. This can help ensure that poetry runs separately from other packages used in your projects and will help avoid potential conflicts. To get started installing Pipex, you can check the link to Pipex installation in the slide provided in the additional resources. It will also be provided in the description under this video. This will provide you with a step-by-step -step guide on installing Pipex tailored to your machine. With it, you can install poetry from within your terminal with the command pipex install poetry. If you prefer not to use pipex, you can also follow the official poetry installer guide, which is another method to install poetry. Follow the step-by-step -step guide shown on the page. The link to the official poetry installer can also be found in the slide in the additional resources section and will also be in the description under this video. You can pause the video now and take a moment to try to install pipex and with it poetry using the pipex install poetry command or explore the official poetry installer if you do not want to use pipex. Any of these two methods should be fine. You can have a look at both of them using their respective links and then decide which is best for you. Once you've completed installing poetry or many of the methods just discussed, next is to confirm that poetry is installed and one way to do that is to check what version you've just installed. You can do this in a terminal using the poetry version command. Poetry double dash version. You should see the installed version of poetry displayed in your terminal. It might show something like poetry version 1.8.3 as shown in my case. That's it. You successfully installed poetry and are ready to manage your project's dependencies. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to create a new poetry project. 
In the last lesson, you successfully installed poetry. Now, you and I are going to create a brand new poetry project and explore the folders and files that comes with it. First, navigate to a directory you'd like to use as your project's workspace and open it within your code editor of choice. I'm currently within my workspace in my own code editor, Visual Studio Code, also known as VS Code. Take a moment now to set that up in your own code editor. You can pause the video, set things up, and resume once you have set up and opened your workspace in your code editor. If you followed the previous lesson, you should already have Poetry installed and ready to go. You can open and use any terminal of choice to interact with the code you're going to be creating in your workspace. I'll be using VS Code's built-in terminal throughout this course. To create a new Poetry project, first, get a name for your project. You can use whatever valid name you'd like or follow along with mine. Then, you're going to use the Poetry new command. For instance, if you want to name it RP Poetry for Real Python Poetry, you'll type in the command Poetry new RP dash Poetry, and then press Enter. This should create a new poetry project. Here in my terminal, I see created package RP underscore Poetry in RP dash Poetry. Following the project name I specified, this command creates a directory named rp-poetry and with it, some files and folders. You and I will explore and understand these created files and folders next. Once you create your project, Poetry generates a basic folder structure that should look something like this. Inside your project directory, you get an rp-poetry folder. This folder is to contain your project's main code files, the double underscore init double underscore the py file, or the dunder init, as it's popularly called, makes this folder a Python package. Next, you have a test folder. This is where you can add unit tests for your project if needed. Next, a readme.md file for project documentation, and then a pyproject.toml file. This is one of the most important files. It holds your project's metadata, dependencies, and main configuration. You will explore the contents of this file later. If you look closely, you'll notice that Poetry translated the dash in the project name we've provided into an underscore in the RP underscore Poetry package that got created in our project. This normalization ensures that the name is a valid Python identifier, as dashes are interpreted as the minus operator and might cause some issues if used as a package name so rp-poetry wouldn't be a valid identifier. If you want more control over the package name, you can use the double dash name flag to specify a different name for the Python package that will be created in your project. One thing to note is that Poetry will still normalize the package name you specify if there is still a dash in it. Let's discuss another way to structure your project. By default, Poetry follows what we call a flat layout, where your Python package resides at the root level of the project directory. If you prefer to arrange things a little differently and have your code in a source directory, you can use the double dash SRC or double dash source flag when creating the project. This command generates a structure that will look something like this. The files are mostly the same, just that the Python package and your other main code files will now reside in a source parent directory instead. If you want to give this a try, you can create another project, but in your poetry new command, you'll add the double dash src flag, like this, poetry new rp-poetry double dash src. You should then see a slightly different source directory with the Python package and other files created as you had before. Both the flat and source directory layouts have the advantages and disadvantages, and it's a matter of preference. You can explore more on your own by reading the Python packaging guide. Link to that is provided in the description under this video. The source layout is typically ideal for larger long-term projects where you need a clear separation of concerns and more structure to your project. While the flat layout can be quicker to set up and is often used for smaller to medium-sized projects or for quick prototypes. For the purpose of this course, you and I can stick to the default flat layout to work with our poetry project. You have just explored ways to create a new project with poetry. 
which sets up a basic structure for you to build on. In the next lesson, you and I will dive deep into the pyproject.toml file that gets created by Poetry, exploring its content and learn how to configure your project's dependencies with it. In the last lesson, you saw various ways to set up a new Poetry project. In this lesson, I'll walk you through the important sections of the pyproject.toml file, which is essential for managing your Python projects with Poetry. The pyproject.toml isn't unique to Poetry. It's a configuration file standard defined by PEP 518. This PEP outlines how Python projects should define their build dependencies. The format used is TOML, which stands for Tom's Obvious Minimal Language. It was chosen for how flexible it can be while maintaining simplicity, making it more convenient to configure your projects without involving complex syntax. When you create a new project with Poetry, this is the pyproject.toml file that gets generated. It should look something like this. Let's break down the key parts of this file. The sections are often referred to as tables, the first being the tool.poetry section. This section holds general information about your project. Some essential fields you must specify include the name of your project. This will be an identifier in cases where you might publish your project or package to PyPI, Python Package Index. Two, the version of your project, typically following the semantic versioning method, major.minor.patch 0.1.0, for example. Three, the project description, a brief description of what your project or package is about. Four, a list of authors that contributed to the project, formatted as name and email in angle brackets. Five, a readme. This is where you specify your project's documentation file. These fields are important for publishing your project as they help others find and understand your project or package on PyPI. Next, you have the tool.poetry.dependencies section or table. This is where you declare the Python version or any external packages that your project relies on. Initially, you see just the Python version listed like this. One key thing to note here is that Poetry assumes the minimum Python version based on the environment in which it was installed. For example, if you installed Poetry using Pipex on Python 3.12, it will automatically use that as the minimum version in the pyproject.toml file. You can, of course, change this to fit your needs. As your project grows, this section will expand with additional dependencies, and Poetry will help manage versioning for you ensuring that you have the right versions for your project installed. Next, you have the Build System section. This section is in Poetry specific, and it defines metadata used by Poetry and other tools to build your package. It follows the PEP 517 standard of Python packaging. It includes two keys. One, requires, which is a list of build time dependencies for your package. Two, build backend the backend tool that Poetry uses to build your projects. It's a Python object used to perform the build process. As you continue developing your project, you will add more details and dependencies to the pyproject.toml file. It's designed to grow with your project, especially the tool.poetry.dependencies section, which will list all the external libraries you use in your project. In the next lesson, you and I will move on to explore how to manage virtual environments with poetry.